What's happening, everybody? My name is Ryan Thomas, and you're joining me live on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast, coming to you live from One Buffalo, New York. And before I have my guest on the show tonight at 6.30, we got some breaking news in the wide world of sports, uh, in particular, the sport of boxing, as it is official that Canelo Alvarez will be fighting... Gennady Golovkin, um, in a rematch slated for September 15th. This fight, I, I never thought we would see this fight come to fruition. I, I truly did not. Um, truly did not. I thought that when the negotiations were, were starting and this fight was about to be put in place, that it, it wasn't going to happen, it was going to fall apart, because this is what happens in boxing. But both parties, Gennady Golovkin, Canelo Alvarez, finalized a deal as now reported by ESPN.com straight from the straight from the mouth of Oscar De La Hoya, who I would like to think has a huge uh, say in the matter, being that he's Gennady Golovkin's, um, or Canelo Alvarez's uh, promoter. Dan Raphael took to ESPN and put out a statement. And I'm going to read the article by Dan Raphael, the ESPN senior boxing writer. In the end, unified middleweight world champion Gennady Golovkin and Canelo Alvarez worked out an agreement on Wednesday for their much-anticipated rematch on September 15th at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. But it was a wild day, to say the least, across the finish line. So wild that it, it got to a point where, and I'm deviating from the article, but so wild to the point where it got to... A point in which Gennady Golovkin had to fight another fight due to the fact that Canelo tested positive for um, HGH, PEDs, whatever you want to call it. Two hours after the Golden Boy promotions imposed the 12 p.m. Pacific time deadline for Golovkin to accept an improved offer under which Alvarez would get the lion's share of a 57.5 to 42.5 revenue split, came and went with Golden Boy CEO Oscar De La Hoya telling ESPN there is no fight. The sides came up with a last-ditch idea that convinced Triple G to accept the terms. Happy to inform that we have a fight September 15th, as tweeted by Oscar De La Hoya. Terms of the agreement have not yet been disclosed. After De La Hoya called ESPN to say the deadline had passed and there was no fight, things suddenly changed and the window for a deal to be finalized had opened just a crack. Moments after speaking at length with ESPN about there not being a deal and saying that negotiations were, quote, 100% over, one of De La Hoya's associates called ESPN back, hold on, the associate said, as it turned out that while De La Hoya on the phone, while on the phone talking to ESPN, What was termed as a Hail Mary idea to save the fight was being discussed between Golden Boy President Eric Gomez and others involved in the fight and then communicated to Golovkin's team. It's quoted that the fight was, quote, still working on it, as said by Golovkin promoter Tom Loeffler texted to ESPN 20 minutes after the deadline as he scrambled to see if Golovkin, who is currently in Moscow as a guest of one of his sponsors for the World Cup, was interested in the newest proposal. That Hail Mary worked because now there is going to be a rematch of that is perhaps the biggest fight in boxing. Golovkin and Alvarez met last September. Also in the T-Mobile Arena, the same site where the rematch will take place, obviously, and the fight went to a heavily disputed draw that, that most, myself included, believe that Gennady Golovkin won. The fight generated 1.3 million pay-per-view buys and a $27 million gate, the third biggest in boxing's history. Most project that a rematch would beat both figures and that Golovkin would earn more than $40 million. Alvarez received the lion's share of a 70-30 revenue split for that fight, and when the rematch was set for May 5th, Alvarez was due to receive the Lions share of a 65 to 35 split. 
reading this article from Dan Raphael, but when Alvarez, 49-1-2 with 34 knockouts, filled two drug tests in February for the performance-enhancing drugs, clembuterol, and was suspended for six months by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the rematch was canceled, and the fighters traded harsh words. Golovkin instead faced short-notice replacement Vannis Martirison in Carson, California. Wiped him out in two rounds and made $1 million instead of roughly 25 he would have made had the rematch taken place as scheduled. But then they turned their attention to trying to put the rematch back together for the fall. Cleared a major hurdle when Alvarez signed up for a year-round voluntary anti-doping agency testing 24-7-365. This was big news in the sport of boxing. Canelo deciding that he was going to sign up for the voluntary year-round test from VADA. However, weeks later, Golovkin, 38-0-1 with 34 KOs at a change of heart and insisted on redoing what De La Hoya said was a signed contract. Golovkin demanded a 50-50 split. De La Hoya eventually increased Golovkin's share to 40%, but Triple G continued to stand firm on parity, at which point De La Hoya declared that the Canelo train has left the station and that he was moving on to try to close a deal for the fight with Daniel Jacobs and Canelo Alvarez. A former secondary titleist who had given Triple G a very tough fight and a close decision loss in March of 2017. That declaration from De La Hoya got Golovkin to lower his demands to 55-45, but Golden Boy would not give him that much. Instead, agreeing to the split difference of 57.5 57.5 to 42.5 and, and giving him Wednesday's deadline, which came and went, but there still being some hope because deadlines in boxing are not usually carved in stone. De La Hoya specifically talked about how both parties want the fight. Tom Loeffler wanted the fight. The only person who didn't want the fight is Triple G. Fans want the fight. We went, we bent over backwards. Triple G says he's a fighter, not a businessman, and he's right. He's no businessman because he doesn't understand numbers. It's 100% over. We've been trying to make the numbers work, and Canelo finally said, screw this guy. We've come off our 35%. We've come off our contract that we had signed a couple months ago, and we still moved our percentage to make Golovkin happy, but clearly he doesn't want the fight. Tom and Eric have been on the phone until right about now, and Eric just told me that we have no deal, 100%. There's no fight. We've come up on our offer, and there's no budge from him, so there's no fight. That's it. There's no fight. Moving on. We have deadlines, but it's boxing. Deadlines are as fluid as the water a boxer drinks between rounds. But here we are. We are back here again talking about this fight that for a little while it looks like boxing was not willing to make it. Whether you want to point the finger at Canelo or, or Oscar de la Hoya or Gennady Golovkin, you can point the finger at any which one of those parties, or Tom Loeffler, Golovkin's promoter, but this fight is taking place, thankfully. Barring anything crazy, barring a crazy, stupid, dumb injury, this fight is taking place. And that excites me as a combat sports fan, as a combat sports writer. I will be doing my live round-by-round scorecard on Twitter, as I usually do. At Thomas Takeover. Follow me. Send me a follow. Send me some questions. You can get on the show. That is how my next guest got on the show. That is how my last guest got on the show. That is how pretty much every one of my guests have got on the show due to Twitter. Twitter is a, is a fantastic vehicle for promotion. The president uses it. I use it. <laughs> but to say the least, um, I'm very excited for this fight. I think this is a fight that needed to happen. It's a fight that makes all the sense in the world. Um, Gennady Golovkin, I thought, did win that first fight, but now we get the rematch. We'll find out. If Canelo takes this fight, will there be a third? That's the real question. That's what I want to know. If Gennady Golovkin takes this one, will, will there be a third? Will this be an epic boxing trilogy? That of years past that we have seen Ali Frazier, you know, comes to mind. Um, Ward Gotti comes to mind. Uh, 
Leonard Duran comes to mind. LaMotta, Robinson, they fought six times for Pete's sake. Boxing is known to have trilogies inside its sport. That's what makes boxing uh, special. And even in the UFC, even in mixed martial arts, there's been trilogies. Gray Maynard, Frankie Edgar, um, Tim Sylvia, Andre Arlovsky. You know, there, there's been several. Tito Ortiz, Chuck Liddell, Randy Couture, Chuck Liddell, Ken Shamrock, Tito Ortiz, um, hopefully Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz. Hopefully that's one that, that comes to fruition. Trilogies are known in combat sports as something that often happens, and that that is my question. Now that the rematch is actually signed, and I pissed and moaned about that for a couple months, now that the rematch is actually signed, does that mean that there will be a third fight? no matter who wins it, only time will tell. That's the next question. But I would be pretty much an idiot to look at this fight now and and try to analyze it. I I don't want to give my prediction on it. I don't really want to, you know, analyze it in that way just yet. That's what we'll save for September, which is a long way away, and it'll give me something to talk about during those months other than football and baseball. But to say the least, I would be an idiot to say that I, I, I think Canelo can win this fight. I, I would be an idiot to say that because I didn't think he won the first time. I thought Triple G matched up very well with him. I thought he did what he needed to do to win the fight. And Canelo Alvarez was not, was not all there. There were rounds where it looked like he was taking rounds off. There were rounds where it looked like he realized what the scorecard was and he needed to push the pace. There were rounds towards the end where, you know, it, it went back into Triple G's favor at the final bell. I asked myself, who did I think won that fight? And it was painfully obvious to me that Gennady Golovkin won that fight. So it, it almost, you know, I wondered at the time, and, I, and I'll always wonder it now, excuse me as I take a drink of water here. I wondered it at the time, and I'll always wonder it now. Did... Boxing put this fight together as a draw. Did those three judges, you know, Adelaide Bird included, did they score this fight a draw based on the probability that it would it would create a rematch and another big money fight in boxing to keep the, the wheels moving, to keep the machine oiled? I hate to sound like Eddie Bravo, the conspiracy theorist over here, but I do got to wonder. I, I have to wonder on that end. Did they just rule it a draw just so they could have another fight? It sounds so simple and so easy and so ridiculous, but boxing has done that. They have made controversial decisions just so they could see more fights featuring these two fighters. Once again, Pacquiao, Tim Bradley is another one. And I alluded to all these trilogies in boxing. And the majority of the time, one of those fights went to a decision and and the wrong guy got the nod in the eyes of not only the opponent, but in the eyes of the fans. The judges get it wrong. That's usually what happens in the sport of boxing, that the judges usually get it wrong. So I want to give you guys my breaking news take on... Excuse me, Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin, a huge fight in the sport of boxing... The rematch is on. I'm Ryan Thomas. It was the Thomas Take. Take care.